Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Cyril von Wattenwil. In this talk, I'm going to present you four open source patch solutions. I'm not going to go into detail too much. So first of all, to my person, uh, my name is Cyril von Wattenwil. I'm working at Finnish Sci Group. I have a developer background, but right now I'm working in system engineer. Um, I like to try out a lot of new things. And since I'm a bit lazy, I like to automate and everything I can. Um, a few words about my company. My company named the Finnish Sci Group. We are one of the biggest open source only service providers in Switzerland. Um, we have currently about 50 employees and in those four blue rectangles you can see our field. We are also um, partners of the major big Linux distributions to, just to show you what we can do then. Um, here's also only Shortly a slide about our customers. I'm not going to get on in detail too much just to give you an idea of what we are doing um, so um, first of all, I'm beginning with what is a pass um, It's five o'clock. So most of you know it, but I will do it as well um, To get you an idea of it um, Most of you I think will know the birds view sheets, but I will do exactly the opposite of it so um, as you can see in traditional application, we have like a front end. We say it's Node.js, we have backend, it's Django, a database, Postgres, and the varnish reverse proxy. And in these traditional setups, you have to set up all those things manually. You have to deploy them manually. You have to do a lot of stuff by hand. So if you pack them to a logic unit, I call it pod inside here, which is the terminology of most. Um, platform as a service solutions. We have this application packed um, with specification and everything. And if we zoom out a bit more, we can see this application running three times inside the path. Um, as you can see, there are three nodes where um, Docker runs, you have some control issues and so on. I'm not going to get into detail. So um, I think you should now have a really, 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 really basic idea of what a platform as a service is. Um, and you may now ask why you should use this. As described before, in traditional setups, you have to set up everything manually. For every new release, you have to deploy it. You have to make changes, set up configure files. You have to maintain test environments normally done locally by the developers which leads to the problem. It worked on my machine, which I think most of you will know. Um, and that's where the platform as a service comes in. So you just have to specify once how you deploy your app, where it should run. And then for every each step, you can just um, those steps will deploy then your app, run it, root it, add the SSL certificates, and so on. So I believe. In a few cases, this will be the feature in our business. Um, so I'm going to give you a raw idea about those four ones. The first one is Kubernetes, came from Google. I call it the Google Pass. Then the second one will be DICE, um, which I call Kubernetes with benefits. And then the OpenShift from Red Hat, which I give the claim um, to Java Pass, but it's not limited to Java to say that. And at least, at least, will be docu to try the tone pass, which is a bit different from all the other ones. So um, I'm starting with Kubernetes, which is the Google um, container orchestration tool, which is around in the market for about one and a half year. But um, internally, Google developed it um, before five or six years ago. They called it Borg. Um, and then they open sourced it, released it, and they give the control to the Cloud Native Foundation, which is a part of the Linux Foundation, meaning Google don't have exclusive control over that project. Um, here you see a really, really basic um, diagram how it should work. You have um, here um, Kubernetes normally is based on etcd. You have the control panel, which takes care of everything, um, distributes the containers to the whole nodes, and so on, so on. It's really a basic graphic. Um, on the technical side, um, everything, as on before on the third slide or so, um, 
is packed in pods, they call them so, which is a logic unit of a few services um, describing an app. Um, you have in, um, in Kubernetes, you have two parts. You have the control pane, which is based on ETCD and a few other services um, managing the whole cluster to get the apps running. And then you have um, the nodes on which it on which a thing called Kubelet is running and a thing called Kube proxy, which is responsible to starting the containers on the Kubernetes nodes. So, um, um, if you, um, why you should use Kubernetes? Kubernetes is quite major solution because it's one of the oldest one. Um, you have quite good scaling possibilities. Um, it's quite community driven. But the problem can be that Kubernetes is not with batteries included. So if you want to build a solution, you have to do a lot of things on your own, especially for the service provider part. So if your startup company loves to try and know things, Kubernetes might be the right for you, but you have to build a lot of things on your own. The second solution I'm presenting is called DICE, which is my favorite, <laughs> personal, um, which it's their claim, it's Kubernetes with benefits. Um, the idea behind DICE is to lay a developer-friendly overlay to the Kubernetes solution. Meaning, I think most developers are demanding Heroku or something because it's the oldest path around the world. And DICE will support this from scratch. So, um, on the architecture side, DICE is also based on the Kubernetes, as you can see, and it lays a layer around it, which is um, a build for the images. You can it aggregate your logs, um, rollback releases, and so on and so on. But basically, it's just Kubernetes with some microservices. Um, so everything in DICE is implemented as DICE pods. You don't have to run it manually or something. Um, it's more like a service on site on Kubernetes. Um, it's recommended to run DICE on Coras, but it should run on every system where you can run your Kubernetes cluster. So, as mentioned before, it has direct support for Heroku build packs, meaning it's easier to migrate if you already use that solution. Um, why you should use DICE? Um, in my opinion, it's based on really well-known product. It's, it's Google, um, Google Kubernetes, and the ETCD from Coras. Um, but it's, it really simplifies the workflow of of the Kubernetes for deploying apps, installing them, so on and so on. And it also adds a self-service capability. Oh shit! A self-service capabilities which you don't have inside Docker, meaning you can give credentials to your developers and they can run up their own development environment in a few seconds. Um, one thing that isn't really positive about DICE is it has a quite strong focus on the 12-factor apps, meaning you can run nearly everything you want, but it's it's harder than in other solutions. And it's also the database service which is integrated is Postgres only. It doesn't mean you can't run another dat database, but then you have to do it by yourself, which can be problematic. Um, I would recommend DICE mostly for web agencies and companies who want to do experiments. It's not also not really ready, ready. Um, Third solution I'm going to present calls OpenShift and came from Red Hat. As you can see, the claim here is the Java path, but of course it supports nearly every language you can think of. Um, so this is only the claim. Um, the idea behind OpenShift is um, to lay something above Kubernetes. It's also based on Kubernetes but more in the enterprise way and gives you professional support and so on and so on. There are two editions of this platform. There are the origin one, which is the community-driven free one, and the enterprise, which has professional support and some more features. You may will hear the term middleware when you're talking about um, OpenShift, 
meaning it has a quite strong integration in the whole JBoss and Jar world, which makes it quite easy to deploy Jar files and so on. Um, as you can see here, the architecture is also based on Kubernetes as well, like all the others as well. But it lays a little bit a thicker um, layer on site than DICE. You, you see you here have a lot of controllers, so on and so on. But basically, it's also just a Kubernetes with benefits. Um, so um, why you should use OpenShift? Um, OpenShift fits perfectly if you're a bigger company, don't want to make experiments, um, wants to have a solution with professional support. Um, you have um, OpenShift is the only solution which has a web UI. Um, Self-service at its best. You just can give credentials to nearly anyone, and he can click and deploy an app in easy steps. Um, it's the quite easy to set up because it's based on Ansible playbooks. You don't have to set up the cluster before. This will be done for you. It's also based on well-known products. And may one thing to mention, but only in the enterprise edition, is that you have the possibility to get certified containers from Red Hat, meaning um, they're certified in security, which guarantees you that your app runs and you don't have this security issue, which can be a problem. Um, one thing that may be a disadvantage on OpenShift can be it has a quite strong focus on Java applications. Um, but to say again, nearly every application language will run. And OpenShift will only run on Red Hat and CentOS, and since version 3.2 on Project Atomic, so it's not distribution agnostic as the other ones I presented. Um, then I came to the fourth one, which is a bit different than all the other path solutions. Um, I call this the try it at home pass, and I really recommend this to every developer who hasn't done any pass stuff yet, but who wants to try it out at home. Um, the idea behind it is really to provide a, the smallest pass you can even, you have ever seen. You have a Heroku-like workflow, not like in DICE directly support for build packs, but you have quite the same workflow. Um, it runs on a single host. It is, it's installed in seconds, so it's really perfect for every developer in here who wants to try it out but doesn't want to take the hustle to install a whole cluster and so on. Um, I don't present an image here because Docu is only a bunch of bash scripts, about 350 lines long, so it's really, really simple. But you have nearly the same workflow for trying out um, the pass way. Um, so um, if, as I said before, if you're a developer and interesting to get a new workflow, um, install it on your wagon box and you can get into the workflow, um, into the pass workflow, but of course, it runs on a single host. Um, it's only a few bash scripts. I wouldn't recommend to install this in production. It's only more for testing, but I really recommend it because a lot of developers don't know the pass workflow, and with the product like this, they can get into a little bit. So um, I came to conclusion. It was a little bit shorter than I thought. Um, you can say there is not a single solution to rule them all. But nearly every solution based on Kubernetes, so it's worth a try to look at Kubernetes. And if you don't have the time, may do the docu, which I presented before. Um, it really depends on your need as well. If you have enterprise needs, if your business needs to be it's business critical, then I would recommend it to use OpenShift. If you more want to do more experiments, then you may look into DICE or Kubernetes. And if you just want to play around with it, you may have to just install Docker. Um, Pass is also a quite new technology, so time will tell which approach is the perfect. It's about one or two years in the market. It 
it's hard to say this one is perfect and fits perfect for you. Uh, this was shorter than I thought, so are there any questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>